when we come to the data section here that we've seen in previous videos, and I need to say I need a temporary piece. Is that how you spell piece? Piece of RAM. Or we'll say memory. And give it a data type D word, which means four bytes. And let's initialize it to zero. This is called static memory, meaning that memory will exist for the entire program. It doesn't come anywhere in the middle of the program, nor does it leave anywhere in the middle of the program. In fact, statically, the assembler and the combined with the linker will create room for this piece of memory in the executable, and then when we load up the executable, uh, this, this RAM is there. Okay, That's static memory. On the other hand, we have memory called dynamic memory. And the stack is the first piece of dynamic memory we have seen. However, the stack is kind of a hybrid between static and dynamic, meaning the static part is the stack has a fixed size. In fact, you can see here with this directive, we say we need 100 hex bytes, which is 256 in decimal. We need that many bytes for the stack. So when the program, when this piece of the program starts up our, our assembled code, we, we get 256 bytes and then we can push, you know, like we did in the last video, we didn't push a five. I believe we pushed a one, we pushed a two, and a three, and a four, and we were pushing those registers, and each one is four bytes, and we can push all day long, but then one, if we kept pushing and exceeded our 256 byte limit, we would go off the top of the stack. Now, what's out here? It could be our static memory. It could be our code. Here, here's this is out here. This this could be static memory. This could be code. It could be well, however the assembler and the linker decided to put our code together in the executable image and, and also with the operating system, how it divvies out RAM. Uh, this could be anything. And so if we go out here and we start overriding this memory and say it's our code, all of a sudden we're, we're changing our code <laughs> at runtime. That's bad. Okay. That's called a stack overflow. All right. Going back to the the cafeteria example if we had a lot of plates in fact actually I was at a local restaurant here one night and they have these containers which they put all the glasses in there's these plastic crates and they fill these crates up with glasses so they can dry out oh they can send them through the dishwasher too and anyway I was talking to the waiter and he said they're only supposed to stack them two maybe three high but they had a new guy that night I was there it was a late night and I, me and a friend were the only ones there and this new guy stacked it and stacked it and stacked it. Oh, this was such an epic experience. He took it all the way up here. Well, hopefully you can see a, a, a disaster about to happen here. And sure enough, it did. Something happened, and this stack overflowed, tipped over. And it was a good thing the restaurant was pretty much empty because these glasses went everywhere. It was a good, I'm not exaggerating, it was a good about 30 seconds of crash, bang, boom, glass everywhere. It was awesome. It was well worth the price I paid for my dinner that night to watch this experience. And the waiter told me that that was about 80% of the glasses that they owned, and, and that was a Friday night. Saturday was the next day. They had to scramble to get some new glasses. Anyway, that's called Stack Overflow. We definitely do not want to do that in our own programs, because no matter what's out here, this memory out here, whether it's code or maybe it's our static data, or maybe it's dynamic memory, which I'll show you how to do in a much future video, but uh, a future video down the road, uh, where we can create memory dynamically. Well, we just don't want to go out there and start stomping on memory. And hopefully you're seeing here, like I did in the last video, I forgot to put this return here. It's in, in assembly programming, it's up to us to be very diligent and particular about making sure our programs are correct because yeah you can go out in memory and do whatever you want and read whatever you want it's, uh, we're at the virus level here in, in a way you can warp your code all you want to you don't have to return at the end of the procedure it's just a good idea anyway I'm soapboxing but on that note we don't want to push more than we have room for and we want to make sure we have enough room now don't be dumb and say hey give me tons of bytes because that's, I doubt this will even assemble. Let me try assembling this. Control Shift B. It's like, hey, um, too much, okay? We want to be wise. We want our stack to be big enough for our program, but no more. Okay, I think all too often we get lazy as programmers, and, and I know in these examples I haven't been very diligent myself, but I'm just saying, hey, I need 256 bytes of memory, and generally, yeah, that's, that's probably way more than I'll ever need for my stack. It depends on how many 
procedures I want to call them. We'll see as you call a procedure that calls a procedure that calls a procedure that calls a procedure, your stack will grow quite large. But if you're super diligent about it, you'll find out and you'll do some analysis on your program and say, hey, what's the maximum stack I'll ever need if I call this thing as deep as it could possibly go? And then you'll put that value here and not waste any memory, but chances are your time's worth more than calculating that. Anyway, that's that's the whole trade-off there is, is how good are you and is it really worth your time? Uh, religious debate I'm sure we could have. Okay, another problem is what if I go uh, pop EAX and I just... Pop, 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 pop. Well, the stack starts somewhere in memory. Let's Here's more RAM, and that's not our RAM. Say our stack is from here to here. Okay, that's all of our stock, st stack memory. And maybe out here the static data got put down here instead, or our code got put down here, or our dynamic memory. doesn't matter. This is not our memory, just the same as this is not our memory. But if we pop too much, we'll end up popping down below the stack and that is called stack underflow okay we went too deep which we don't want to do as well inside of our procedures we want to push onto the stack that's fine we can push onto the stack we don't want to push too much though we don't want to push beyond our upper boundary here and and for every value we push onto the stack we want to be sure to pop it off so in this case if i'm pushing eax then then I only want one, one, one pop, okay? For every push, we have a pop. 